Hello, I'm Betty Barrett. I'm the director of the Social Technical Systems Program at the University of Illinois. And before I start, I'd like to thank Avanija Sarma for collaborating on this script for this talk. Um, this, we're going to talk a little bit about um, some of the ways that technology is now being used in, d in different ways and, more, and making more profound impacts on our society. Technology in the workplace and our society are increasingly more intimately linked to each other. Every time technology takes a great leap, it brings about profound changes in the way we work and subsequently in the way we live. The socio-technical system description of this relationship is one which emphasizes the interdependent relationships between people and technology. However, in many a workplace or industrial setting, there's a failure to understand this link, which eliminates many of the con many considerations of interaction between these aspects. Currently, we are living through a transition out of a mass production environment dominated by Taylor scientific management and into a work organization period that emphasizes employee autonomy, team-based work, and information sharing. The forces that brought about these changes in the past continue to work on the workplaces of today. Rapidly accelerating growth of technology that we've been experiencing prompts the need to stop and look at how these forces are driving our actions. As an example of one of these technologies, we're going to use biometrics. And first I'd like to show you some pictures of examples of biometrics as they are used today. First we'll see a hand scanner. And the hand scanner is a wall mount. This hand scanner is a wall mounted unit. Person walks up, puts their hand on the screen, and the machine relay, reads that data and relays it uh, to a database which confirms the identity of the person using the machine. Second, we'll look at a retinal scanner. This one is actually installed in an airport. And the person using the scanner looks into the machine. The machine reads the retinal patterns and, again, checks it against stored information to confirm or identify someone. And third, we have a handheld re retinal scanner, which is the same technology but in a form that can be used in a variety of different settings and is more portable. Biometrics refers to the use of a person's physical and behavioral data to establish identity. The physical parameters of that considered include fingerprints, hand geometry, DNA, and iris, re iris recognition, among others. The behavioral parameters can include voice, rhythm, or gait. A basic biometric system works by storing employee data and comparing the data presented to it with that stored data every time an employee swipes a finger or presents any other pertinent physical data. The biometric system comes with a set of pros and cons that are as follows. In the pros column, we see that this technology gives us the ability to replicate biological data. It uh, um, causes a reduction in the costs posed by traditional verification systems like passwords and pins, and there's a relative ease in usage. The, cr the con column, on the other hand, has some serious issues. For example, the use and dissemination of personal data. The possibility of conflict between the verifier and the person whose data is verified. And the, loss of st the lack of standardized constraints on data collection. A, detail, a more detailed view of the pros and cons will review, reveal that the effectiveness of a biometric system depends on the way it's implemented. While biometric verification is an almost foolproof way to guard areas needing security, like banks, and places related to national security, like airports, its intensive use in the workplace raises many issues. Proponents point to the effectiveness of biometrics at eliminating practices like buddy punching, where one employee clocks in another who is absent. Biometrics are excellent for the purpose of identity verification and access control. When complex elements like video sur surveillance and DNA matching are introduced, they threaten to breed discord in the workplace. 
Video surveillance has the potential to assume the form of modern day Taylorism by preventing employee autonomy and flexibility through strict controls. More often than not, employees are not comfortable with the thought that there's a database containing their details that is beyond their control or access. To what extent an employer is justified in storing details of its employees is highly debated. The possibility of an employer utilizing the data for purposes other than those mentioned to the employee cannot be ruled out. Biometric systems have the potential to increase security, but will also allow for much greater control in the workplace. These potential, this potential ri raises questions about what the ultimate goals and needs of the workplace are. Additionally, the conflicts that can be triggered by the introduction of biometric controls can also have a negative impact on motivation and performance. SDS theory promotes worker autonomy and flexibility, which may not match strict controls. Will it help if the employees participate in every step of the implement implementation of this system? I think the jury is still out about how nervous people will be. Will these measures ins ensure that there is a positive outcome on the interdependences mentioned earlier? That again, the jury is still out. It's hard to know. Only time will tell, but the acceptance of new technologies often rests on the trust and goodwill that exist in the employment relationship.